Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we're gonna talk about icons. And there are actually thousands of pre-made system icons that we can use in our SwiftUI apps. These icons come default in Xcode, and they're actually created by, I guess, a team at Apple. And they're super handy to us as developers. Because instead of having to go out and create custom icons every time, and then try to figure out what pixel sizes we need for our app, we can use these built-in system icons that are actually customizable by default. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can get these icons in our app, how we can change their color, change their size, and I'll also show you guys how you can access the catalog to see all of the potential icons that you can put into your app. Now, when you make production apps, a lot of times you're still gonna to wanna to use your own custom icons, but as a developer or as a beginner, I highly recommend using these system built-in icons just because they're so easy to use and they're so customizable by default. I use these icons all the time in my production apps as well as my courses, and Apple has made thousands of pre-made system icons, so there really is an icon for pretty much everything that you need. All right, so I'm back again in our Xcode project, and let's create a new file for all the code we're gonna do in this video. Let's right-click on the navigator, create a new file. This will be a Swift UI view, and I'm gonna call this Icons Bootcamp. So let's click resume on the canvas, make sure it's all connected. And as I mentioned earlier, there are a bunch of system icons that come by default in Xcode. And if we type in image and open the parentheses and start typing system, icon, system name, uh, we have the ability to add a system icon in here. Now we need to know the system icons name. So I'm going to start with a basic one and just call heart. And we can see immediately that the heart uh, comes onto the screen. I'm going to actually use heart.fill because it's a little easier to see. And let's start customizing this heart. So the first thing we can do to system icons is change the size. And we can do that the same way we change the size of a text. So just like we did in text, we call dot font. And because it's a system icon, it will update automatically. So we can do dot title and it will make it a bigger icon. We can do large title and it will be even bigger. And we can get smaller. We can do something like caption. Now I recommend trying to use these sizes because again, these default system sizes will update automatically and be dynamic with the iPhone system sizes. So if the iPhone has large text enabled, these will be a little bit larger than normal. Uh, but if you want to set a specific size, we can also call dot font and then call dot system. And here we can use the size completion. And then we can just set it equal to an exact size we want. So we can do 50 and it will be 50 pixels large. We can do 500, it will be huge. For now, let's just set this down to maybe 200. And the next thing we can do with system icons, which is super convenient, is change the color. We can just call dot foreground color and we can call dot green. Again, you can put any color in here. We already did a course on colors. You can't put a gradient inside an image, but we can change the color to whatever we want. We can use a color literal if we want. Color literal and put in whatever we want. And that looks cool. I wanna show you one other method of changing the size. So let's comment out this second font here. And let's add a frame to this image. So let's call dot frame. And let's make it maybe 300 by 300. And we don't need the alignment, so I'm going to delete it. So now we have set a frame here. And you can see in the preview when I click on this frame line that there is a blue box outlining the frame. But of course, our icon has not resized. That's because if we don't use one of these font sizes, and we just use a frame, we need to specifically say that this image is going to be resizable to the frame. So I'll just call dot resizable, and now we'll automatically update. 
And when we call resizable, we then have the option of what aspect ratio we want it to resize to. So we can call it dot aspect ratio. And then there is a fill and a fit. And you'll get a better understanding of these when we use actual images. But basically, fill will maximize the image so that it takes up as much of the frame as possible, whereas fit will resize the image so that it stays within the frame specifically. So you can see here with fill, uh, it's maximizing the, the height here because it's going all the way to the top edge. But to, because of that, the uh, width is actually going outside the frame a little. And that's okay if we wanted to do fill, and we can just leave it like that. And it still looks pretty good. We can also call dot fit, and it will resize so that it stays exactly within the frame here. And you can see that there's a little space on the top and the bottom because it wanted to keep the proportion of the image. So these are really useful. And, and I want to note that instead of calling aspect ratio, we could also just call dot scale to fill or scale to fit. So it does the same thing as fit and fill, but we can, just, we can just call it directly. And we can do scaled to fill. So if you are using scaled to fill, and you wanted to make sure that the image never goes over the edges of the frame, like it is right here, we can also just add after the frame dot clipped, and now it will clip the image exactly to the frame no matter what. So you can see that the edges are getting cut off. Obviously, this is not practical. This doesn't look very good, but you'll find that the clipped modifier can get pretty useful. But for right now, I'm going to comment that out, and you're probably wondering what other icons we can use. Right now, we're just using hard.fill, but where can I find all of these system name icons? Well, Apple actually has an app for that. So if you go on Google and you go to developer.apple.com backslash design backslash resources, you could also probably just Google Apple Design Resources, uh, or you can Google SF Symbols. On this website is a free link to download the SF Symbols app. And this is just a very simple app that has all of the system icons. And you can see there's over 2,400 to choose from, which is awesome. So I already have this downloaded and it looks like this when you open it up. Basically it is just a list of all of the icons that we can find. So you can click through these and find whichever ones you want to use for your app. All you need to do is copy the name of one of these icons and then paste it into our code. So I'm going to take maybe this paperplane.fill and you can just right click and click copy name. I'm going to go back into Xcode and then just instead of heart.fill, let's paste paperplane.fill. And it's that easy to change out your icons. I'm going to do one more for you guys. Uh, let's go, let's find a random one here. Books.vertical, I will copy that and paste it here. Let's make it a little smaller. So I'm going to actually comment all of this resizable out. And let's just make dot font dot large title. So now we have our books dot fill here. And when you get into developing, you're going to find that you're going to use the same icons over and over. So you can just start typing in your icon names here. For example, X mark is pretty common and it's just a nice X. So the last thing I want to mention to you guys before we move off icons is that Apple recently released a multicolor option for a couple icons. So I'm going to go back into the SF Symbols app, and there is a multi-color option here. And if we go to that tab, and I click this little color icon on the top right, you can actually see these icons come to life. So what I've realized is the part that's blue is the part that we can change colors of, but the green, the red, and the yellow, we can't change colors. Uh, so they're semi-customizable, not 100%. I wish you could change out these green. At least I don't know how to, but they still look pretty cool in apps. And, uh, you know, the, the green and red are pretty good indicators of what's going on in this icon. I think Apple does that on purpose so that when you use these icons, users know exactly what's going to happen. Like this is clearly an ad user or ad friend, and this is clearly remove. 
So it's pretty useful, and let's just copy one of these. I'm gonna copy the name here, person.fill.badge.plus. I'm gonna go back into Xcode, and I'm gonna paste it in here. Now, by default, the icon is going to color just the same way as all the other one color icons. But we can change this by just calling, before we change the font and the color, we'll call it .rendering mode. And we can do, instead of template, we will do original. And now you have that multicolor icon. And we can get rid of our red here. Let's hide, hide that. And now just a black with a green plus, which is pretty useful in an app. So that's it for this video. You guys now know how to add system icons. You know how to find them, how to change their size, how to change their color, and how to use multicolor icons. So again, these are super important because every app has icons. Uh, I do want to note that you can add your own icons, but if you do that, you're going to have to probably get a designer to make the icons, and then you're going to have to get them to resize that icon to all the different pixel dimensions. So if you don't want to deal with all that, these system icons are super, super convenient, and I highly recommend using them in your apps. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. And in the next video, we're going to cover adding our own images, which is also the way to add our own custom icons if we wanted to. So once again, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.